My name is Vic Armstrong. say we're very fortunate today um, to have none other than the legendary stuntman, action choreographer and second unit director Vic Armstrong join us on Kung Fu Kingdom. Hi Vic, <laughs> welcome Hi. to Kung Fu Kingdom. Hi everybody, thank you. Great to have you with us. Um, have you taken a look at our site? Pardon? Have you taken a look at our website? I have, yes, very impressive, nice, yeah, it's a vast number of names on there, the icons <laughs> of the business. You've had a phenomenal career in the stunting choreography, you know, action directing business, spanning over 45 years. And you've got over 250 movie credits. It's yeah. actually 50 years this month, <laughs> and it's probably getting on for nearly 400 credits. Oh, <laughs> you know, some little ones, some massive ones. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's amazing how it adds up. Yeah, amazing. And you're also listed by the Guinness Book of Records as the most prolific stuntman in the world. Yes, I'm very... Uh, I'm sort of, sort of prolific in as much as I love to work, I'm an overachiever, and uh, I just love my work, and uh, as I say, I like to overachieve, always aim as high as I can, and some, some weeks I would do nine shows in a week, do seven days work, I'd do days on one and nights on another. And, uh, You're also the only stuntman uh, to be awarded the BAFTA Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm very, very proud of my BAFTA, actually. As you said, I'm the only stuntman ever to have one, and it's a special Lifetime Achievement Award. It's called the Michael Balkan Award, and I'm a great fan of Michael Balkan, who was the, uh, one of the fathers of British cinema, let's say, uh, Eating Studios, and you know, to get that, that iconic figure in your hands is just fantastic. I'm very, very proud of it. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, you've got this absolutely amazing book, and we have to mention it, because it is absolutely packed to the rafters with um, great stories called The True Adventures of the World's Greatest Stuntman, My Life as Indiana Jones, James Bond, Superman and other movie heroes. Um, just some of the other names mentioned in the book, just you know, so, so readers and um, viewers can, can understand. You've got people like you know, Steven Spielberg in there, George Lucas, Martin Scorsese, Stanley Kubrick, Ridley Scott, and actors like Marlon Brando mentioned in there, Frank Sinatra even, um, Oliver Reed, Robert Redford, all the way down to Sean Connery, Harrison Ford, Robert, Robert De Niro, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, Jet Li, Michelle Yeoh, and the new guys, you know, the newer guys on the block, Tom Cruise, Will Smith, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt mentioned in there. Um, there's even a picture of you with the Queen in there as well, and so many more stories. How do you feel, looking back, to have worked alongside such eminent figures in the movie business? How do you feel about it's, that? It's very strange when you look back on your career, because at the time it was just the next day and the next day and the next day, and suddenly you have a list that's, you know, I'm impressed by the list of the people I've met because, um, you know, a lot of them I've, I've been a fan of for many, many years and uh, when you actually get to meet them, it's, it's very exciting, even for me, no matter how many you meet. Obviously, I've met the Queen at premieres and I was invited to a cocktail party at Windsor Castle, which I flew back from Louisiana for that night and flew back the next day. <laughs> it's something you wouldn't want to miss. But no, I'm, I'm very, very proud of that list of people I've worked with and... Uh, I feel very privileged and very lucky, though, to have been around in a period that covered all those people. Mm. And to be successful when I was, starting at the right age, which was pretty young, 18 or so, mm. when I started doing the business, and uh, 
getting, so therefore I was in my peak at the right time when Superman came out, when Indiana Jones came out, when James Bond was, was in the middle of its peak. My, my very first Bond film was You Only Live Twice in 1966. I was still learning the trade then, I'd only been in the business a year. Mm. But, uh, I, you know, I reached my peak in the sort of late 60s, early 70s, and from then on, you know, until you get too old and too, too stiff to be able to do these sort of things. But I was very, very lucky to be at my peak when those movies were, were peaking as well, the Indiana Jones yeah. genre, if you like. You know, yeah. it was a very special one as well for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Um, well, could you tell us which five actors and which five directors you have felt a particularly strong resonance or connection to? over your career? Uh, there's so many great ones. Obviously Spielberg, Spielberg is fantastic. Yeah. You know, I, I still think Raiders of the Lost Ark is a standalone film that spawns so many wonderful movies. Mm. He was wonderful. Mm. Paul Verhoeven, great friend of mine. I did, uh, I did Total Recall and Starship Troopers with him. Great friend of mine. He's wonderful. Right. Marty Scorsese is an absolute gorgeous man. Um, we have great empathy for each other and he's so so caring and a wonderful guy. Rob Cohen, I'm a great fan of Rob Cohen's, you know, when you think Rob, the films that Rob's done, you know, from Fast and Furious to uh, the, the Dragon with, with the Bruce Lee, yeah. which I was asked to do and I couldn't do it for Rafi with Laurentiis, ah. to Miami Vice, he did the original Miami Vice. You know, he's a wonderful director and I've worked with him and, you know, I like to direct. I've directed my own movies, I've directed Young Indiana Jones. Yeah. And watching Rob work, you know, he'll print take one and move on. He's got total confidence in what he's doing. You know, to me, they're great directors. Uh, five, five actors that uh, you felt particularly connected? Harrison Ford, obviously, was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. We did a lot of stuff together and haven't done much recently, but yeah. we're, you know, still keep in touch. Yeah. Um, Liam Neeson's a wonderful character. Tim Roth was great, actually. Um, I'm just trying to think of others I work with. In the <laughs> but, um, Tom Cruise was great. I've known him since Legend, which was 30 years ago, probably. So Ridley uh, Scott's film. Ridley Scott's Legend, yeah. yeah. Um, seen them all grow up, really. But other ones, you know, that are sort of probably... Doug McClure was a great old friend of mine. <laughs> we did People of Time Forgot. You know, it's not necessarily famous actors that yeah. you, you, you get... They get friendly with you know yeah. um, you're friendly with people because of who they are not not what they are so uh, right. it doesn't doesn't equate that the famous ones are more friendly than the others it's yes. probably the, the opposite effect even sure. and so what made you first get involved in the sun industry if you give us a brief sort of background yeah my passion in those days I was always a keen athlete yeah um, I loved running yeah. I, I ran for West Sussex and the, the 220 which is the 200 meters now I suppose yeah. Um, I loved riding, I was always an athlete, but my one burning ambition was to be a steeplechase jockey. My father's a racehorse yeah. trainer and I desperately wanted to be a steeplechase jockey. And I started riding the racehorses exercise on the gallops, galloping them when I was nine. Yeah. I was always ahead of myself, as a, you know, I, was, I was tall and big for a kid and people treat, treat you older when you're like that. Yeah. So I started riding racehorses when I was nine and when I was 14 I actually started competing in steeplechases. And then when I was 17, I met a, a stunt guy who used to come and exercise horses for us, and uh, Jimmy Lodge, wonderful horse stunt man. Mm. And to keep fit, he'd come and ride exercise in the mornings and yeah. he used to tell me about the films he was working on. And mm. then uh, a little while later, he offered to rent one of my horses. They had a big film called Arabesque, which had some hu a huge horse chase in it. So we rented him this horse, <coughs> and then he called the next day and said, look, we need some good riders as well, because uh, they're not quite up to it. So I went down and rode on it, and I thought, wow, this is great, 20 pounds a day. It's not continuous work, which suits me, so I can race in my spare time, and this will sponsor my racing, because I wasn't making money at racing, I was just doing it for the love of it. And uh, I did that, and that was with Gregory Peck, and then I thought, well, I might try my career of this. And I, I went to the stuntman's agent, Gabby Howard, who was in Prague Street in Paddington, and uh, she took me under her wing and she got me an audition for a film in Switzerland with Gregory Peck again, because the first one was with Greg Peck, and I went on to that, and then I came back from that, and we only did twice was kicking off, and I got on to that, and suddenly wow. it all started snowballing, yes. and I thought, well, I can make a, a profession out of this. Excellent. So it, was, it, was, again, was timing and luck, being at the right place at right. the right time. Excellent. I mean, back in those days, I mean, you're an athlete, you know, you're, you're very into sports and things. Did you spend time training in the martial arts? 
Did you do any sort of gymnastics, tumbling? What, what did you what kind of training did you do then? Well, when I started the business, I could always drive. My mum taught me to drive from when I was five, six years old. You know, we'd jump in the old car and she'd pick me up from school. And then as soon as we got home, we'd drive up the gallops, a mile or so up the gallops to the house. And yeah. I'd slide over and, and she'd sit in the passenger seat and I'd drive <laughs> the car and I drove the tractors. And wow. dad would let me turn the horse box around and things. So I could always drive. Yeah. Um, I was always... I like motorcycling. I was never a great motorcyclist, but I like the, the aspect of jumping them and things. And Not for the sidecars. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I boxed uh, purely as a fitness um, thing for, for the racing and the reflexes and fitness. Yeah. So I could box, I could uh, drive. I did no gymnastics in those days. I did a lot of sports. I'd run, run, run all the time. So you had a lot of cardiovascular fitness. Yeah, yeah. and power to weight ratio was very, very good, which stood me in good stead when I did you only live twice because we had to slide down 125 foot just holding an inch piece of hemp with a, a hose pipe split and so wrap around it and use that as a brake shoe. But wow. you had to basically, with your arms and your legs, stop your whole weight from 125 feet of yes. momentum. So my power to weight ratio was pretty phenomenal. Yeah, considering your height. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because yeah. I was riding and so fit at the time, and I was also very young. Yeah. Wow. So, as I went on through the career, I then started doing trampolining. We, had a, we always used to have a trampoline on the front lawn here, and oh. uh, funny enough, my wife, Wendy, taught me to trampoline, because she was a <laughs> gymnast, and her dad had taught her at a very young age. Right. So I did trampolining, I did more boxing, sword fencing, and high falls. Trampolining helped with the orientation in the air for the falls and everything else, which you have to have you know, right. control your body when you're falling. Right, right. So your team is called the Armstrong Action... Armstrong Action, yes. Armstrong That's Action. Our, our family connection. Also, Stunts Incorporated, which was my original stunt yes. team, which we, uh, we formed on a bridge too far, way back in the 70s. But because there's so many Armstrongs in the business now, yeah. me being the first, my brother being the second, mm -hmm. when and I... Andy, yeah. yeah, he does what I do as well, and uh, then he's got a son and a daughter, mm -hmm. and then my, my sister had a son, he's doing the same and he's directing as well, and I've got four kids that do it, and my wife does it, so when we, wow. did, when we did one of the Spider-Men, there were nine Armstrongs on the show. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what a family affair. Wow. So let's talk about movies a little bit. Um, of course, rehearsals are, are vital in something that you're known for, your meticulous preparation and so on. Um, do, you, do you do any kind of physical workouts or training before those? The last real sort of action that I, I did, last doubling action, if you like, was on Indiana Jones' the Last Crusade. Mm. Because of my coordinating and directing work, I've been too busy to do all the jobs at once. You have to sort of start focusing on, on the directorial side of it. Yeah. But to do that one, I came out of training for three months, uh -huh. came in, went into training, came out of retirement, went into training for three months to get ready for Indiana Jones' Last Crusade. But that was just overall fitness. Looking at what we're going to do on the film, a lot of riding, a lot of gymnastic jumping and fighting, obviously polished up with those. Yeah. But on the other hand, when I'm coordinating or directing, I hire my core stunt group based on their abilities and you pick gymnasts, you pick fighters, you pick fencers, you pick drivers, depending on what what the film is actually needs. Right. And um, like for uh, Mission Impossible Three, we had a huge amount of fights on that, you know, so we, we you know, we sort of and Mummy Three we had a lot of fights on that and I'd pick fighters to come with me as my choreographers. Right. And then you rehearse a lot in advance because uh, obviously shooting is where the money costs. You know, sometimes it's hundred grand a day even mm. when you're filming. So you want to get as many minutes, usable minutes during the day as you can. You don't be wasted time trying to think up fights and things. Yeah. So all the fights are worked out well in advance. All the camera angles are worked out well in advance, yeah. and people are, are picked because of their their abilities to yeah. match that. You've worked as a stunt performer and stunt coordinator. Um, can you tell us about those contrasting roles? Is one more difficult than the other? How is that? Um, a stunt coordinator is, very, is the hardest one, really, because as a stunt person, you are there, picked for your ability, you rehearse the job, and you know in advance whether you can do it or not, because you've rehearsed it and you know, seen what little idiosyncrasies happen in it, where, you, where you're going to cut into it, and things like that. As a coordinator, 
your initial job is to ask people to do things and you're hoping they've got the ability to do it and you do train and rehearse beforehand and make sure they're they are safe doing it, they're not just doing it because they desperately want the job or they desperately want to please you or they desperately want to keep working with a particular actor sometimes. Yeah. So, and you also have the responsibility of the budgets as a coordinator. You have to go to all the different departments from props to special effects to the director, if you're not directing it yourself, and right. talk about the camera angles, how it's going to be shot, how it's going to work, how, what's going to make it successful. So there's a lot, lot more involvement in it. But then, of course, when you shoot it, you feel 100% responsible. If there is an accident, then you've asked somebody to do this, so you are responsible. There's a lot of responsibility. And yes. I know the films I've been doing recently. I've got Scott, my son, and Bruce, and my daughter, my other son, Bruce, and my daughter, Georgina, and Nina, both of them, they do it, or my wife, even. And on Green Hornet, for instance, we did some hellacious car wrecks and things, and my son, Scott, was on a driving a pickup on fire, going head on into a bus and out through the roof and someone's on down the road bursting into flames. Wow. And, and you've got to say, okay, roll cameras and action. And you think, my God, this is my son in here. I'm sending to his doom. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, wow. it's, 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 a, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of... I, was, I don't think I was grey-haired until I, they started doing it. <laughs> so you would never do anything unless you thought they were totally capable of doing it. Yeah. You know, people used to say to me with Tom Cruise, is it going to be safe? You know, is it, is it, is it risky putting an actor up there? I said, well, hold on a minute. Get your, get your values correct. You're worried because Tom Cruise or actually your director said to me about Angelique Jolie. Yeah. Angeline Jolie, is it safe putting her up there? I said, get your, get your values correct. It's a human being up there. Is it Angelina Jolie or Janice Dobbs from down the road? It's still a human being on that thing. And if they die, it's a human being you're killed or hurt. I said, it's... It's nothing to do with the fame of the person, it's, right. it's to do with the safety of a right. human being that we're worried about here. Right. And right. It, it, I'm getting embarrassed. Well, I, 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 I didn't mean that. I mean, <laughs> if you did, you're worried about your health. <laughs> but that's all the sort of things you have to deal with. And, yes. and you don't do anything unless you are totally confident that the person has the ability to do what they said they could do and you've yes. seen them do it. And obviously, there's a risk, that's why it's called stunt work. But, yes. uh, if you were working with Jackie Chan, uh, to do some stunts. How do you think it would turn out? Because you've both got masses of experience. He's from the East, you're from the West. Um, both, you know, well over 45 years in the business. How do you think it would turn out working with someone like Jackie Chan? I, I don't think there's any problem at all. You know, I've worked in that situation many, many times before. Um, with Jet Li, yeah. with Tom Cruise, and with lots of actors, Harrison Ford, that can do their own stunts. But it's just a case of collaboration and the film business is all about collaboration it's not just one person saying this is why I'm going to do it you talk about things you work out which is the best way for that person the best way for this person Jackie Chan is very particular about what he does but I, I also work a lot with with foreign people yes and I'm not just stuck with my own little group doing my own little yeah song and dance if you like <laughs> I worked in over 70 countries, lots of them over again, over and over again. I've done 15 probably in Thailand, yeah. four in China, mm. several in Hong Kong, yeah. America. Yeah. And each place you go to, you get a different coordinator. You get a local coordinator who knows the ins and outs of the local people's talents and what yeah. equipment you can get. Mm -hmm. So you work very closely with these people. And I'm very, very aware of the fact that I'm a foreigner coming in. Mm -hmm. I don't look big-headed as though I'm... I'm a foreigner, so I know far more than you do. A lot of these people are very, very talented. Yes. I used to get mad in the old days when Americans would come to England and treat you as if you're just hired help. You know, yes. we had an industry here, and we know how to do things, and this, that, and the other. So it's just because we have a different accent doesn't make us stupid. And it's yeah. the same. I feel the same when I go to foreign countries. And I'm very respectful of, of their abilities, and yes. it's the same when you work with an actor, or a stuntman, or a director, or anybody that's physically knows their onions, if you like, and yeah. you listen to that and you work with it, and it's, it's all about collaboration. Right, right. Have you ever been in touch with people like Jackie Chan or Samar Hong? I have. I was going to direct a film a few weeks ago, months ago, <laughs> with Jackie Chan, but it, it fell through, sadly. I was desperately wanting to do it. It was a wonderful <laughs> film, yeah. Ah. But, um, it may resurrect itself, but yeah, I've met him in Hong Kong, and you know, I've been right. Golden Harvest a lot in the old days, Excellent. and... and um, a lot of my stuntmen when I did Double Impact and Taipan and things, they're all, they're yeah. all protégés of, of Golden Harvest, you know. Excellent. So, um, Excellent.